Good morning and welcome to St. John United Church of Christ. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. Just a few announcements before we begin our worship this morning. Again, if you are, if you are watching us on Facebook Live, please leave a comments, comment for us there. So we would love to know who is watching and joining us this morning. There will be a budget approval meeting immediately following this worship service. Well, actually at 1130, and maybe 10 or 15 minutes after the service ends. Uh, it should be a very brief service, and it will be on Zoom. And if you're watching and have not received the email, you can uh, join in by going to zoom.us backslash join, and then entering in meeting ID number 867-4504-2615, and then when prompted, ent enter the passcode 233-414. And you will be placed into a waiting room until I can admit you so we can control who actually gets into the meeting so we're not getting people who, not, who really should not be there. Um, it's just a control that Zoom has put in place for meetings that are published publicly so that um, we don't get Zoom jacked, which sometimes happens. Uh, also, for the annual meeting, which will be held in January, the, the reports are due into the office by January 10th. And lastly, if you ordered a poinsettia uh, for Christmas, they are on display here this morning, and since we won't be doing a live Christmas Eve service, they will be available today for pickup, drive through pickup um, from 12 to 1 p.m., if you happen to miss that slot, you can stop by the office during normal office hours this week to pick up your poinsettia to take home. So now let us enter into a spirit of worship as Carolyn plays for us. <laughs> I invite you to join together with me in calling upon God. Our souls reach out to you, our God. We rejoice in the knowledge of you. This week we come before you in hope and in joy. Look with favor on your humble servants. We give thanks that in you the weak will find strength, the hungry will be fed, the fearful will know peace, the poor will have their needs met, the powerful will know their place, and all peoples will be united in your love. In a world of pain and distraction, 
We may not always fulfill your wishes, but we ask today for your help as we try to bring this new life ever closer. In this Advent season, as we look forward to the celebration of your son's birth, we give thanks for all that you have given us, all that we are, and all that we can do in your name today and every day. Amen. And now Lonnie and Mary will light our Advent wreath. Now a message for the young and the young heart. Does that picture look like anyone you might know? Can you tell who, what this person is going to grow up to be or anything about that person from looking at that photo? It's actually a picture of me. I'm not sure how old I was there, but there's also some car keys there, so I was ambitious. Well, it's really hard to tell anything about anyone by looking at them, to know what they're going to go through in life, what kind of person they will be, what calling they will have. Well, when I was little, I, I thought about a lot of things that I thought I wanted to be. And I lived in a big city until I was 10 and never thought I would do a lot of things that I ended up doing. I ended up living in a small town and living out in the country and building rafts and going down the river. I also lived on a dairy farm for a while and helped uh, calves be born, which I did when I was about 12 years old. And I was always pretty short for my age and really didn't do many sports when I was younger. And I never thought I would be a long-distance runner and never imagined that I'd be able to run a marathon, 26.2 miles. But I actually ran three of them. Well, I never thought I would live and work in a foreign country or be able to speak another language, and, and yet I lived and worked in Germany for a couple of years. And did you know that when I first graduated from college with my bachelor's degree, I was a mechanical engineer, and now I'm a minister? Well, today we're going to hear the story about when Mary was told that she was going to have a baby, and not just any baby, she was told that she was going to have Jesus, the Son of God. Now, Mary was just an average girl who came from a poor family, and she wasn't anyone special until her life was interrupted. Now, each one of us is filled with the potential to do many things that we would never imagine that we would be capable of doing, and things that would, we could probably never do without God's help. Because all things are possible with God. And I want you to remember that as you grow up and keep your eyes and ears open to what God may be calling you to do. Let's pray. Loving and compassionate God, we are so grateful for, for you coming to be on earth with us in Jesus Christ, your son. We are so grateful that Mary said yes let it be with me according to your will. And we pray that we might have the courage to do the same when you call us. 
We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Now I have a music meditation that's slightly different than, or it is completely different than what was shown in the bulletin and sent out earlier. I came upon this video and I thought I just had to share it this morning. So please join with Edmonds United Methodist Church and their choir. And they only sing There Is No Rose. come to the point in our worship service where we lift any special joys or concerns that we may have in our lives or the lives of those we love and care for. I'll try to summarize each of those prayers and say, Lord, in your mercy, and ask that you respond, hear our prayer. If there are any special joys or concerns that you may have, you can comment on our Facebook live feed, and Eric will relay those to me. A couple that I have to bring up that have been sent to me earlier this week. From the Steensma family, Tom and Vicki Steensma, they'd like to lift up James Steensma and Maggie Steensma, their son and daughter-in-law, who have been infected with COVID. And James is a, a transplant, has had a liver transplant, and so is severely at risk. And Maggie is basically his caregiver and his wife. 
So if you would lift them in prayer and lift Tom and Vicki in prayer as they uh, go through this difficult time, Lord, in your mercy. And also for Judith Kovacs, the sister of Sally Myers, who is beginning the end of her physical journey here on this earth, and for Sally, who struggles with not being able to be with her sister at this time, Lord, in your mercy. And for the family of Jerry Mallott, whose life we celebrated yesterday, Lord, in your mercy. So let us spend a few moments lifting these prayers up to God, listening in the silence and lifting up the prayers that we have on our hearts and in our minds, knowing that God hears and knows our deepest concerns and our greatest joys. loving God, in your unending love, you sent an angel to Mary, telling her that she is blessed and highly favored. As you were with her, we know today that you are with us, and we give thanks. Knowing your presence and rejoicing in the surety of your love, we pray today for your blessing and for your guidance. On this winter's day, we remember the gift of your creation given to us for sustenance and shelter for us to enjoy and to protect. And yet, we have squandered this gift and put the lives of future generations in jeopardy. We ask for the strength to make changes now to protect and renew your planet before it is too late. In this time of uncertain future, we pray for your church, both worldwide and this community of believers gathered before you today. Grant us the wisdom to create and support new growth, both spiritually and numerically, as we dedicate ourselves once more to your great commission. And at this time of plenty, we give thanks for all that we have, for the joy that this season brings and the time we set aside to celebrate. But we also remember those among us and those around us with little, those who struggle and go hungry. Help us to be more generous and more loving this year. We pray today for ourselves, your beloved children, as we seek to follow you. As Christmas approaches and expectations of plenty, of community, of happiness are set, we remember that not all people enjoy this time of year, that the joy of others can cause pain in some. We ask for the wisdom to care for and be sensitive to those who need our help at this time of year as we pray in the way that Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory both now and forever. Amen. While we continue to do the work of the church in the time of this pandemic and hope that at this time you'll spend a few moments to prepare an envelope to send in your gift or connect with our tithely account as shown on your screen to give your gifts electronically. So joining Mary's joyful song, our souls proclaim the greatness of the Lord and our spirits rejoice in God our Savior. So with humble and grateful hearts, 
Let us at this time bring our offerings to God. Generous God, you have given us everything that we are and everything that we have. In this season of giving, we come before you in joy and with thanks to offer these tokens of our dedication to your church, our community, and its mission and ministry that we can continue to do your work today and every day. Amen. Will you join me in prayer? Astonishing God, send your Holy Spirit upon us as we await the coming of your Son. Fill us with good things that we may conceive your reign on earth and glorify you according to your word. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The reading for this morning is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38 and 46 through 53 from the New Revised Standard Version. In the month the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, <clears throat> Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, 
The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. The Holy Spirit breathes into us these words. Well, this is the fourth week of Advent, and we light the candle of love together with the candles of hope, peace, sometimes also called faith, and joy. And these are reminders for us of what the birth of Christ, God incarnate, brought to the world. This is a message, an interruption, if you will, for our time and place as we struggle to find ways to live in the middle of a pandemic that threatens everyone, but especially the most vulnerable in our midst. I think the scripture alone is, is quite a message to us. But as I was reading the commentary from the Church of Scotland from their resource group called Spill the Beans, I was so taken by the words that they had written that I thought I would simply repeat them here for you and then finish with a brief message of my own. You know, I, like many others I have spoken with, have been struggling with all that has been going on in the world these past few years, but especially in these last few months. The world seems to be off kilter and ignorant of the original blessing with which God brought everything into being. In the first creation story in Genesis, when all was said and done, we are told that God stepped back looked at creation and called it good, very good. And then something happened, and humanity began to follow a different path. Well, I believe the birth of Christ was another of God's attempts to interrupt, to set things right again by gaining firsthand experience of the true life of humanity, by living the love God has had for us from the beginning and living it in the life of Jesus. I think today's scripture gets to the root of that feeling. And so listen to these words from the writers from the Church of Scotland. Sorry to interrupt. I know it's Christmas and all that, and everyone is busy singing carols and preparing for nativities, though from a particularly novel and peculiar angle this year, but I have to interrupt. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. And as the festivities and attempts at carol services and Christmas videos are put together for Christmas Eve and technology is being used like it never has for the Christmas message, I have to interrupt. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. And as countries compete in new ways, as we pull ourselves through the coronavirus pandemic, and we fight over vaccines and put national economic plans in place rather than global, and Main Street's real in the wake of COVID-19, I have to interrupt. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. 
and as the administration settled in in the U.S. and the fallout thereof, and the U.K. skirts with the lie of the land due to Brexit and China and the West and Russia fall out, and the world shrinks in its vision as people's expectations fall between what they thought they would expect at this time of year and what is in reality possible. I have to interrupt. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. And as communities redraw the paradigm of our age in the light of coronavirus and political changes and injustices arise in their wake that have the potential to be used to redraw how we do economics and neighborhoods and welfare and church, and the chance is missed, I have to interrupt. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. The reality is that in the midst of our world right now, and it so happens to be the legacy of pandemic that has given us the greatest existential experience of a generation, God breaks in with a song. It is a song that interrupts. It is meant to. It is meant to jar and annoy and provoke us. That is what happened first time around to a young woman whose life was pushed into the place of an outcast. And it still must. This song of Mary has upset and annoyed governments who have refused to let it be spoken, and people of faith who would rather surrender to the Victorian romance of Christmas interrupts all of that, all of that with the core theme of incarnation. It is a powerful message because it is a message of hope. And hope is powerful when it disrupts the ways of the majority and the powerful. It is a vision of another way of organizing the world, and vision is powerful when it confronts those who have relied on an alternative that is less than adequate. It is a word of justice, and justice is powerful as a motive for those who have lived with injustice. And so, God interrupts Mary's life, a nation, the powerful, the, the politicians, and the theologians. God interrupts the church, the season, and the world as each surrenders to what it imagines is inevitable post-pandemic, with a reminder of what is possible now more than ever. May we interrupt the season with God's song, God's message, God's word. Quite a powerful message, don't you think? I love the imagery of the interruption because it seems that throughout history, as depicted in the biblical narrative, humanity tends to go off on our own way with a pattern of life that is at best not what God intended, and at worst, the complete opposite. And sometimes we turn away. This is a pattern that is repeated like an echo throughout time. The people and the circumstances may change, but the story, oh, the story sounds so familiar. It may not be history repeating itself, but rather events rhyming with the stories of the past. Time and again, humanity heads down a dark path only to be interrupted, redirected to a path of light and joy. And I'm really not sure how it is we constantly veer off. Maybe it's because we get comfortable and then complacent and then follow a way of selfishness and greed which leads to poverty, war, oppression, and fear. 
I believe we are on the precipice of another interruption, a course correction coming with new vision for the way forward. Will we see it? Will we hear it? Peter Gomes, a professor at Harvard and a pastor at Memorial Church there, was a prominent American theologian and considered one of the best preachers in recent times. And unfortunately, he died in 2011. Gomes was once asked in an interview for his definition of the good news, and Gomes replied, we don't have to be as we are. This is good news. We can change, and we can keep changing. We are not trapped in our histories or our fears. We can set ourselves and our communities on a new course. Gomes went on to say, though, that this good news is not only liberating, it's also unnerving, destabilizing, even frightening. We can't rely, he says, on things always being the way they are. We can't rely on things always being the way they are because we will be interrupted. Mary, a young woman, some scholars believe as young as 14 years old, was going about her life without thinking. She wasn't anyone special, just an ordinary person, perhaps not too unlike most of us. But then her life was interrupted, and she changed course. And the angel Gabriel appeared before her, saying, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. She was much perplexed by this interruption and the words she heard. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Do not be afraid. This year has certainly been an interruption for us, a strange message that has caused many to stand perplexed, wondering, as Mary did, just what kind of message this is. And like Mary, we too have many questions, wondering how this can be. How can we find our way forward? Imagine what might have happened if Mary simply turned away and would not listen to Gabriel. What might not have come to pass had she said no? I mean, the future didn't look that promising to this young teen who would find herself pregnant and not yet wed in an honor-shame society and culture with the potential for death by stoning in order to maintain the honor of her family and her betrothed. This had to have been on her mind as her pulse quickened while Gabriel laid out the interruption that would change her life forever. Perhaps perplexed is perhaps an understatement. And perhaps we are at a similar juncture in our lives, and we too stand perplexed. What will we decide? Will we see God's will for the world as Mary did? I certainly hope so. God has compassion for the lowly and the hungry. God hears their cries and works to interrupt us from our comfort and our complacency. May we hear with ears to hear. May we know in our hearts that nothing will be impossible with God. And may we, like Mary, let our spirit rejoice as we say, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me <clears throat> according to your word. I have to interrupt. My spirit 
rejoices. Amen. And now I invite you <clears throat> to pray together with me the prayer in the time of a pandemic. May we who are merely inconvenienced remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who don't believe in the virus respect and protect those who do. May we who have no risk factors remember those who are vulnerable. May we who have the luxury of working from home remember those who must choose between preserving their health or making their rent. May we who have family to care for our children when we return to work, remember those who can't because they have no one to care for their children. May we who have to cancel our vacations remember those who lost their jobs in the tourism industry. May we who are worried about our investments Remember those who live paycheck to paycheck. May we who settle in for a quarantine at home remember those who have no home. As fear grips our country, let us choose love. During this time when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other, let us find ways to be the living embrace of God to our neighbors so everyone can live and breathe. Amen. And now I invite you with a, to respond in music with We Hail You God's Anointed, verse 1, which we sang at the beginning of Advent. And if you're here present in the sanctuary, I just ask that you sing quietly, but those of you who are at home can sing as long as you wish, as loud as you wish. Just a reminder that there will be a brief virtual budget approval meeting today at 11.30 following this worship. And again, you can go to zoom.us backslash join and enter the meeting ID 867-4504-2615 and the passcode 233414. And you will be placed into a waiting room until I can get you into the meeting. May our souls magnify the Lord. May we go from our time of worship with our spirit rejoicing in God our Savior, emboldened and challenged to serve the Lord in the manifesto of God. Our worship has ended. Now our service begins.